Hello, I'm Dr. Stuart Lesson. I serve as the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation Board President, and my talk today is entitled Cutaneous Lymphomas 101. It's meant to serve as an overview, an introduction into the important pieces of information and concepts that every patient with cutaneous lymphoma and caregivers should know about their disease. So here is a lineup of topics I wanna to cover in my talk today, and so let me get started. First, I need to talk to you about what is the immune system. Cutaneous lymphoma refers to the fact that lymphoma is a cancer of lymphocytes or white blood cells that circulates throughout the body and into our, all our tissues. On the left, you'll see a figure showing different lymph nodes and a lymph node map of all the lymph nodes in our body along with the liver and spleen. These are the homes that houses our lymphocytes and it's from these deposits that lymphocytes traffic throughout the body and into the skin. On the top right, you see a three-dimensional or high-power photograph of a lymphocyte. That blue sphere with the different projections represents a white blood cell and all the projections and surface proteins that serves its functioning. On the bottom right, you see a blood smear, which shows a purple nucleated cell. That is a lymphocyte surrounded by those pale cells. Those are red blood cells and they serve a very important function in our immune system. So lymphocytes are categorized into two different classes. B cell lymphocytes or B lymphocytes are those that make antibodies. And the other major category are T cells that are further subcategorized into helper T cells and killer T cells. And as the name implies, the helper T cells help in initiating immune responses and the killer T cells are involved in eliminating germs and different proteins that the body needs eliminated. And so the term cutaneous T-cell lymphoma refers to a lymphoma of lymphocytes, of T-lymphocytes that occurs on the skin. And just as there are our lymphomas of T-cells, there are also lymphomas of B-cells. And here you see a couple photographs of B-cell lymphoma-like presentations on the skin. Uh, they typically present on the skin as red or purple nodules. So on the left side, you see basically a red nodule on the nose, and on the right, plaques about the forehead and the temple. And that this is a typical presentation of cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. We categorize lymphomas by the different types of presentations, the different locations, and the different uh, patterns on, on the skin biopsy, as well as the different proteins or subcategories of lymphocytes. And so here you see a list of B cell, uh, cutaneous B cell lymphoma categorization. Cutaneous T cell lymphoma is pictured here. Typical mycosis fungoides is the above panel, the top panel, with patches on the left, the mid is plaques, and then you can see cutaneous tumors about the head and neck uh, on the right. Cesare syndrome is a leukemic form of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, and there you see the uh, typical example of an exfoliative erythroderma of Cesare syndrome. The entire skin is covered in basically red scaling skin. Cesare syndrome also is accompanied by definition in large lymph nodes, as well as abnormal cells circulating in the blood, so therefore we refer to it as a leukemic form of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. But there are other forms or subsets of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, and here they are listed here uh, with different types of subsets based on the cell typing. I want to call your attention to the diagnosis of lymphomatoid papulosis. Lymphomatoid papulosis is not, in my opinion, a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. It's a related disorder but it is a disease that is characterized by recurrent papules on the skin that come and go, and lymphomas don't come and go without any treatment. These spontaneously come and go uh, without treatment. They can cause lots of symptoms, but uh, they're not lymphomas per se. They can be associated in 10 to 15% of the time with a risk of developing subsequent lymphomas, it's, but it is not a lymphoma as is. So that's the classification. I want to talk to you about an important concept that I think is difficult for most people to uh, really grasp, and that is the skin biopsy and how that is interpreted and how that is important uh, for the diagnosis of cutaneous lymphomas. Um, I like to an analogize a skin biopsy as looking through a keyhole. 
we take a piece of skin, we section it, we send it to the pathologist, and they look at that glass slide and they basically see different features. Just like one looks through the keyhole and sees a person and can see a person on the other side of the door with certain uh, colored uh, clothing, uh, maybe certain colored hair, and can say that maybe so-and-so so or maybe may identify that individual, but they can't say anything definite about uh, what they see and how they can interpret it. And that's how it is in some biopsies. And that's why the biopsy uh, result is really a visual interpretation of what the characteristics are on the slide. And so many times uh, we do not get a definitive diagnosis, but a presumptive diagnosis, suggestive diagnosis. So to augment that visual interpretation, we also send skin biopsies for cell typing, which allows us to identify the type of lymphocytes in the skin, the subsets of lymphocytes that help us steer us to a diagnosis of either T-cell or B-cell lymphoma. And then lastly, the skin biopsy can be interpreted for receptor gene studies, which also is another contributing piece of information which helps us interpret the skin biopsy. But overall, these pieces of information need to be correlated with what is on the skin. And so it's really a uh, collection of information that sometimes is very specific and diagnostic and very definitive and sometimes can be less than uh, diagnostic. The next topic I want to talk to you about is etiology or causes of the disease. Lymphomas, all lymphomas, are an acquired disease. They're not hereditary. That means that we don't know what the true definitive genetic basis is. We don't have a definitive set of genes that we know are responsible for the risk of cutaneous lymphomas. We know that immune genes are involved and that some people's uh, immune genes uh, may play a more significant role in uh, processing things in the environment which may contribute to the development of cutaneous lymphoma. Uh, there has been speculation about environmental associations, different infectious diseases, viruses, bacteria, etc., that may cause or contribute to cutaneous lymphomas, but we have no definite link. I now want to talk to you about staging, and I'll just be general about staging. Uh, all cancers uh, ha utilize the standard TNM system in which uh, the tumor is characterized or graded in terms of its size and distribution. The lymph nodes, N for nodes, are also characterized in terms of their involvement and the extent of involvement. M is for metastasis, determining whether the cancer is localized to the tissue of origin or is spread to distant sites. And in this case, B is for the involvement or how much involvement the blood may or may not be involved in this cancer. And so with this TNM scoring or grading system, we then grade the uh, presentation at the time of diagnosis and categorize the uh, stage into four stages. So stage one cancer typically is localized with minimal involvement in a uh, localized spot. Stage two is localized within the skin of origin. It's still on the skin, but it's more advanced, involving more of the skin or more of a, a particular a target organ. Stage three is regional disease, lymph nodes involvement, basically. And stage four is distant involvement of tissues outside of the skin of origin. And so cutaneous T-cell lymphoma is staged one through four, based on the extent of the disease at the time of diagnosis. And from staging, we can, talk, we can generate prognosis and particularly uh, treatment plans. Prognosis of cutaneous lymphoma is better when the skin is diagnosed earlier. That's a simple rule of thumb for all cancers. Now, regarding treatment, this slide shows a list of treatments for cutaneous B-cell lymphoma. Uh, on the left, you see skin-directed treatments, or treatments basically to the skin, such as local radiation, excision, topical creams, intralesional steroid injection, and in some cases, we just observe the cutaneous B-cell lymphoma, especially when treatment uh, is, the risks of treatment are uh, greater than the benefits of treatment because many of these B-cell lymphomas can be indolent, slow-growing, and really not affect uh, one's quality of life. On the right, you see a variety of systemic treatments given either orally 
or intravenously. They are employed when um, the appropriate uh, situation calls for them. And then lastly, I want to finish up by showing you a list of a menu, really, of cutaneous T-cell uh, lymphoma treatments uh, that are divided into skin-directed treatments that are treatments that directly affect the skin from topical steroids, topical chemotherapy, topical retinoids, vitamin A compounds, phototherapy, and radiation therapy. And then on the right, you see a list of systemic therapies, both oral, intravenous, uh, and injectable. Uh, and on the lower right, you see bone marrow transplantation, as well as a combination of so-called multimodality, a combination of multiple um, biologic uh, agents. Uh, lastly, in closing, uh, as far as how patients are treated uh, for cutaneous uh, lymphomas, basically there's a variety of factors that go into the selection of treatment. And uh, it, you should know that because there are no specific proven treatments of choice, uh, every treatment is really individualized to the person. And factors that influence choice of treatment, first is stage. So uh, early stage disease may get just skin-directed treatment, whereas advanced disease gets uh, more sy systemic treatments or a combination thereof. The second factor is goals, whether you uh, want to have a complete response or you just want to palliate the disease and uh, control uh, the extent of the disease and eliminate symptoms. The other factor that influences selection of treatment are concurrent illnesses. So a concurrent illness basically is another medical situation or illness that may influence the tolerability of a particular drug. So if a person has uh, severe uh, in, uh, hypertriglyceridemia, uh, the use of baxarotene that has a side effect of increasing uh, triglycerides in the blood may not be acceptable for that individual. Age is another factor that influences selection of treatment. Uh, in younger individuals, one might tend to be more aggressive, whereas if the disease is uh, diagnosed in an elder individual with more pressing medical problems, uh, aggressive treatment may not be uh, the best in that situation. Access to treatment has always been a influence in that some people can't get to their treatments like phototherapy, uh, can't uh, either afford or their insurance company does not allow for reimbursement of particular treatments, and compliance. Uh, people who uh, cannot fit, uh, for example, phototherapy or radiation therapy into their schedule or uh, find it difficult to apply topical therapies. Uh, so all of these factors are considered uh, into uh, uh, treatment, in tailoring treatments to individuals, and certainly uh, a discussion should always take place between uh, the uh, patient and the, and the uh, provider uh, to come up with the best plan for uh, each individual. And so this is a, a quick overview of the, the uh, general topics that I think every cutaneous lymphoma patient should uh, be familiar with so that they can uh, 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 ask the appropriate questions, inf get informed, and move forward with a, a treatment plan for their cutaneous lymphoma.